Welcome to the last video of chapter 5, which is section 6, Use Inequalities in Two Triangles. Today we're going to learn something called the Hinge Theorem, and then we're going to do a whole bunch of different examples. As you will notice, this page just has examples, so we're actually going to write the theorem at the top. So the, the Hinge Theorem says, if two triangles have two pairs of congruent sides, the larger side is across from the larger angle, well the larger included angle. Okay, so here's the part that is most important. Two pairs of congruent sides. Okay, so looking at the first figure, we have two triangles. We have one pair of sides congruent and another pair of sides congruent. Okay, so that means the hinge theorem applies. Now I have an angle of 111 and I have an angle of 108. Larger angle, that means this is going to be the larger side. So that means TU is going to be bigger than RS. Sorry, I forgot to read you the direction. We had to complete the statement with less than, greater than, or equal to. Okay, looking at example three, I have one pair of sides that are congruent, and then I have a 10, and I have a 9. So I do not have two pairs of congruent sides, so the hinge theorem does not apply. Okay, looking at example 5, it says ET and GT, so I'm going to be comparing this side and this side. First, I want to make sure that the hinge theorem applies. Well, I have one pair of congruent sides. I also have this pair in the middle, AT, which is congruent to itself by uh, the reflexive property. Now I'm ready to look at angles. So I have 28 degrees and I have 31 degrees. 31 is bigger, which means TG is going to be bigger. So TG is going to be bigger than ET, which means ET has to be the smaller side. Okay, pause the video right now and go to the second line and try example 2 on your own, please. Okay, does the hinge theorem apply? Well, I have one pair of congruent sides. I have another pair of congruent sides. Now I can look at their included angles. So I have 115, I have 125, so CP is going to be the bigger side. 125 is bigger, so that means KD is going to be smaller than CP. CP is the bigger side. Hopefully you got that one right. If not, hopefully you now see what mistake you made. Example 4 is going the other direction. This time, we're given all the sides, we're looking at the angles. Okay, so I'm given one pair of congruent sides, two pair of congruent sides, but I don't have the angles. This time I have the third pair of sides. So I have 9 and I have 8. 9 is the bigger side, which means angle 1 is going to be the bigger angle. So angle 1 is greater than the measure of angle 2. Okay, you take a minute, pause the video, and try 6 on your own, please. Okay, does the hinge theorem apply? Well, I have one pair of congruent sides, two pair of congruent sides, so yes, the theorem applies. This time again, I'm given sides and not angles. I have 13 and 12. 13 is the bigger side, so 2 is the bigger angle. That means the measure of angle 1 is going to be less than the measure of angle 2. So hopefully you got that one right. If not, hopefully you now see what mistake you made. So now we're going to move down and we're going to do some more difficult examples. So it says for 7 to 12, uh, match the conclusion on the right with the given information. Okay, so AF is equal to AB. And then the measure of angle 1 is bigger than the measure of angle 2. Okay, so first thing is I need to determine which triangles am I even looking at. So I could be looking at this little triangle, 
Or I could be looking at this big triangle. Okay. Well, I, I do know that this AD is congruent to itself. So now given the AB and the AD, I need to decide which triangle has those two sides. Well, that's only the little triangle. So I'm looking at this little triangle, and I'm looking at this little triangle. Okay, so I have the sides in the middle that are congruent, and these outside ones, so the hinge theorem applies. Now, I know that the measure of angle 1 is greater. That means FD is going to be greater than the side across from angle 2, which is BD, which is E. So E goes with 7. I'm going to cross it out since I used it. Okay, I'm going to erase so that we can try again. Let's look at angle eight, or number 8. It says AF is congruent to FE. AF is equal to FE. And angle 11 is bigger than angle 12. Okay, so these sides are congruent. I also know that FD is congruent to itself. So that tells me the two triangles I'm looking at is this triangle right here, DEF, and then AFD. Because I have two pairs of sides that are congruent. I have this pair right here, and then I have the pair in the middle. Okay, now if angle 11 is bigger, that means the side across from 11 is going to be bigger. So that means DE is going to be bigger than the side across from angle 12, which is AD. So DE is bigger than AD, that's this one right here, A. So A goes with 8. Okay, so let's do one more example just to make sure we know what we're doing. Measure of angle 7 is less than the measure of angle 8. Okay, I'm not going to look at that yet. I'm going to look at the sides that are equal. And I know that FD is equal to BD. So FD is equal to BD. Okay, any other th sides I know are congruent? Well, I know AD is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And now I need to determine which two triangles have those sides. Well, I'm going to be looking at ABD and then AFD. And what solidifies that is those both have angles 7 and 8, which is in statement 9. Okay, if angle 7 is smaller, then the side across from angle 7 will be smaller. So that's AB. So this tells me that AB is going to be smaller than the side across from angle 8, which is AF. So AB is less than AF. Well, I don't see that right away, but I do see the reverse direction. AF is bigger than AB. So 9 goes with statement B. Okay, I know this is confusing, but take a minute, pause the video, and do example 10 on your own, please. Okay, so first thing, AF is equal to AB. AF is equal to AB. And FD, FD is equal to DB. Okay, so this time I have two pairs of sides, and I need to determine, do I have any other sides congruent? Well, I also know AD is congruent to itself. Okay, I have all sides, so I have to be comparing angles this time. Okay, so AD is equal to AD. That means the angles across from AD are going to be equal. So that means angle 3 and angle 12 are equal, which is C. Okay, we're going to skip 11. But go back and do example 12, please. Pause the video and try it on your own. Okay, you should have had a chance to try this one. The first thing we are told is that AD equals DC. And then we're given angles. So I need to determine, are there any other sides that I know? Well, I also know that BD is congruent to itself. Okay, so this tells me that I'm looking at triangle ADB 
and DCB. So now let's go to the angles. Angle 6 is smaller than angle 7. That means the side across from angle 6 is going to be smaller. So across from angle 6 is BC. So this tells me that BC is going to be smaller than the side across from angle 7, which is AB. We don't immediately see that answer, but the reverse direction is D. So hopefully you got that one right. I know this lesson is a little confusing, especially to be taught in a video. So if you have any questions, please make sure you bring them to class tomorrow. We have two more examples that I would like to do. So flip the page, please. Okay, so right away, this is a, a worksheet that we've already done. So this was put here by mistake. So this we're not going to do. Instead, I want you to copy these two figures down. So if you need to pause the video, please do that. Okay, so we need to write an inequality for x. First, I need to determine, does the hinge theorem apply? Well, I know 6 is congruent to 6, and I know that this side is congruent to itself. So I have two pairs of congruent sides, so the hinge theorem applies. Now I have two angles, 65 and 70. 70 is bigger, which means the side across from 70 is going to be bigger, which is x. So this means that x is greater than the side across from 65, which is 7. And that was it. Pause the video and see if you can set up the second example by yourself. You don't have to solve, just see if you can set it up, please. Okay, does the hinge theorem apply? Well, I have 12 and 12, and then I have the reflexive property. So I have two pairs of congruent sides, so that's good, the hinge theorem applies. Then I have two angles, I have 38 and 30. 38 is larger, which means the side across from 38 is going to be larger. So I have 12x subtract 7 is going to be greater than the side across from 30, which is 3x plus 2. If I subtract 3x, I get 9x subtract 7 is greater than 2. So if I add 7, I get 9x is greater than 9, and x is greater than 1. And that's it. Hopefully you got that one right. If not, hopefully you now know what you did wrong. Please write down any questions that you have or anything that you're confused on, and we'll make sure to go over them in class tomorrow before we start working. And that's it. That was our last video. So I will see you when you get to class.